Aloha. It's working, I think. Aloha, everybody. This is Martina Wing, live from Hawaii. 11 o'clock, it's Wednesday, talking about the man rays. I want to give you a little bit of an intro into the beautiful man rays that we have here on the Kona Coast with this video that's playing, was playing in the background. Um, but it's Wednesday. I want to talk about and keep the conversation going of things happening here in town in Ka little Kailua Kona uh, about the Manta and the Manta experience. And thank you for being here. And I know Stefan is here already from Germany. So I'm connecting also with Tara in El Salvador. And uh, I'm in Hawaii. Germany is probably showing up in a few minutes too. So I love this uh, idea of connecting the world uh, and talk about Manta Rays. Um, if you're new to this, um, I come uh, live every week, week at, on Wednesdays. My name is Martina Wing. I'm a passionate manta ray advocate and I live on the big island of Hawaii. I have a map for you prepared. So here's my map. Um, this is the big island. This is the big island itself. We have several islands, but I live on the big island. And here on the big island, we have this little town of Kailua Kona. And along this coastline, we have lots of manta rays. And uh, for many years, people go out and see the man rays and they um, go dive or snorkel with them. And um, one is at the airport location, one uh, place to see the man rays and one is in Keaho. And this is usually my stuff that I talk about. Um, now, on Monday, we had um, a post that created quite a lot of buzz. And I looked at the statistics and we had 17 shares. Um, over 100 reactions, most of them were a sad face, angry face. Um, of, of course, likes means also that people um, like that we post about this. And an incredible two times um, it has been on um, TV that we have big problems in the man, uh, here in Konak uh, with the manta rays. No, the manta rays have a really big problem with the humans that are coming um, to see the animals. Um, actually, we don't have problems with the visitors. We have problems within the industry. And I want to keep the conversation going and do a little, you know, short Q&A today uh, about the comments that I received on Monday and give you some answers live here um, during the Facebook. Um, now, if you're with me live, um, send me a message and ask me questions as well. I will get to this at the end. But if you watch the replay, then you, of course, can always um, leave a comment. And um, Frank is here, San Francisco. Awesome. If you... Um, watch the replay then just put it in into the comment section and i um, will answer then um, through the comment section so um, we are very engaged i have an awesome team behind me i'm also on uh, on the comment section and facebook all the time and i want to engage with people so uh, test us uh, leave comments always leave a comment where you're from and i already said i have germany el salvador and san francisco at this point so thank you thank you so much for being here Alrighty, so let's um, dive into what um, the cues were. Actually, no, I should tell you a little bit what happened. So um, we have the problem that manta ray is getting injured now for by the actual boat owners that bring the animal, uh, the man, bring the humans to the dive site. And uh, we had three um, situations that I can show you proof that how the manta rays look afterwards. And I want to uh, show you this footage real quick. It's a little graphic. Uh, it's six or eight pictures. Let me just get to this. Um, Can you hear me? Yes, it should work now. So, um, I learned my lesson from last week. So what you see here right now is Vicky Ray, and that is from August 27, 2017. And uh, she has some damage to her back. And what you see here is a dorsal fin. That's the tail going down. And then you see there is some damage to her. So the next picture will be um, similar, a little further away. Um, right here, you can see how she's damaged there in the uh, back. And this was in August. Um, I have to say, nobody really cared. Uh, it was just something that happened. Nobody said anything. But then um, about four weeks ago, um, Eli Ray was injured really dramatically. And uh, he has these really deep cuts in his back. And the pictures I'm showing you were done taken by a live underwater. And his name is Jason. So thank you for that, Jason, for sharing this publicly. 
so on March 11 um, this year, four weeks ago, this man ray got uh, pretty much sliced up. And uh, here's another picture. It's quite of a close-up now. But I show you where the claspers are actually sliced up. So this animal was very, very um, lucky to be alive. Um, I just want to go through the pictures real quick, and then um, I come back to myself. Now, um, this is Ralph Ray. So what happened last weekend, this particular man, his name is Ralph. Um, he came in with a cephalic fin injured where it is almost sliced off. It's a really clean cut. Uh, it cannot be done by an anim other animal, by a predator. Um, we really assume that this was, again, uh, too much uh, prop damage. It could be also fishing line, but it because we have, it's really likely that this is propeller damage too, um, but the man rays are getting injured. So um, with Eli Ray, we had proof um, by two testimonials, testimonials were given when this all happened. He was okay at five o'clock on a twilight dive. And then he was not okay anymore uh, two hours later during the manta ray dive. So we have proof today that it's um, the industry that is hurting the animals. And I'm going to come back to you real quick and uh, stay on camera. Hello. Uh, Carrie is here. Jean is here. Thank you, guys. Thanks for being with me. Okay, so the question real quick to answer is uh, how does it happen? Well, what a manta ray likes to do is uh, hang on the surface and bask. Um, also, maybe just go in, in, towards in the current line and just skim on the surface where plankton accumulates. And dive site where we go, it's uh, Garnier Cove at the airport, um, is known for man rays uh, during twilight hours because they are just, it's, a, it's an established feeding ground. And uh, yeah, so if a boat comes in too fast, it is just um, pretty much slicing up the animal and runs over it. And Eli was just very lucky that he got away. Uh, same as Ralph, very lucky that uh, the way it was injured. Um, so this, uh, we posted this on Monday and we got into this uh, conversation um, and showed you the pictures and it got a lot of reactions. And I want to get into this Q&A real quick. I have these questions uh, printed out. And then later on, I want to say, Frank, can you clarify? Hold on a second, I have to read this comment. Can you? Yeah, so I can uh, clarify. So Frank is asking, can you clarify the operators? We can write them. So what you can do, I have uh, also, this will be a call to action for you guys, how to choose who you should go with. It is um, the green list of activity providers. This is a concept that I established a few years ago with my group, and it's still alive. It's on the Hawaii Ocean Watch now, so I'm going to give you the link how to get there. But um, I will not out the operators here publicly. Uh, but you can definitely write me and shoot me an email or Facebook me, and I will tell you one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Um, it's a small town where I live. I just want to mention that um, I live in a small town. And I want to be professional about this, but I do want to inform as many pos people as possible. It's not all sunshine here anymore, this man race and this industry. It's really, really uh, devastating. And that brings me to the first comment I had. It was from Heather Novak this week. Uh, this was a comment. She said, my heart is broken. Yeah, everybody watching this, I'm sure your heart is breaking when you see footage like this because we, we know better and we have to do better. And um, I'm actually pissed. So that is my outlet to do uh, something about it. So um, Deborah Moore, she wrote, I'm going to read this, poor thing. I know they need to be protected, but I also seeing them in the person and watching them was one of the most beautiful experiences of my life. Hopefully you can achieve a delicate balance that allows for both. So Deborah, yes, um, I also want people to see the man rays. There's no question about it. Um, but it has to be sustainable. And I think this is the word that is the word of the century, sustainability. And, uh, you know, I come from I'm German uh, from a European point of view. Uh, it has always been mind boggling how um, the other, p other countries just don't get the concept of sustainability. I mean, I did recycling when I was growing up and when I came to Hawaii so many years ago, there was no question uh, about recycling. I was not existing here uh, or solar or stuff like this. But the, like here in the States now, everybody is getting on the same, getting and understanding this concept of sustainability. And, you know, I have this beautiful hope um, that once the Americans in this big, big country uh, gets it um, straight and get it right. Uh, 
we all can make a big, big difference. And of course, um, all this education I can do through Facebook Live, and you can do too, and spread the word. You know, everything has to be on on a healthy on a healthy balance. Um, so I'm totally 100% agree with you. Yes, we want to see the animals in their natural environment, but everything has to be sustainable. Alrighty. So um, the next uh, comment I got from uh, from was from Mike Best. Michael Best, he was actually a good friend of mine years ago, at least 15 years ago, he was a dive master out here. And he asked the same question like, Frank, um, hey, can you reveal the, um, the companies that did so? No, we cannot pinpoint the exact company who, is, um, uh, who did the damage. That is unfortunately, the dive site is so big now, um, it's just hard to get and know exactly. I mean, you don't want to be on a running prop, not the man race or myself or someone else. Um, I've done it a few times being on the propellers um, because I was then with a the camera and I was filming people and the boat drove too close by. Um, and it's really dangerous. I mean, it's, it's life-threatening. So uh, it's really hard to get um, footage like this. So we cannot pin down um, the company that did it, but we can select, you can select who are the right people. Yeah, Gene, there are so many, let me just, too many operators. The dollars proposal... New rules will help. I get to this in a second, Jean. Thank you for this comment. Um, and things have to be done. I just um, feel like time is running out for the animals, you know. So um, I just want to get as many people involved and informed about this. All right. So this was from Mike. Um, yeah, he also said he wants to out the specific boats. Um, um, you can do it one-on-one -on -one with me. Just send me a message and I give you more information on that. Uh, Mike Main, um, an instructor on, and captain from years ago, um, left a comment and he said, maybe we need a no-wake zone in the area. Yes, a no-wake zone means uh, the boat has to slow down and create no waves behind it. Uh, that's, some, for example, needed in, inside the harbor, so boats that parked on the side don't move around too much. Um, is it necessary when you go to the dive site? You bet, it's very necessary. And it's actually in the voluntary standards, and we have standards. That's the crazy part. People know how to do it, and they just don't do it. Um, it has to do mostly, I think, with um, yeah, greed, carelessness, and um, greed from the operators, just putting as many people on the boat and just get as many boats out there as possible. Um, the other one is um, to... Um, second. Oh, my screensaver just kicked in. Second. I can't believe this. I had all technical snafus. Hope oh, I'm back again. Sorry, I might screen server just ticked in. So, um, so the, op the operator standards, the operators have standards how to do it. Since 2015, they were published. We know how to do it. And it says no wake zone. And uh, people just don't do it. You know, they just race into the dive site. Um, some people say I have to be fast around Keahuli Point because there's sometimes the big waves there. But if you have two big waves, then just stay home. It's not safe in the first place. And uh, coming to the dive site, racing into the dive site, um, it's not cool, period. There could be people. Now, just imagine if there would be a person that would have been mowed over um, instead of a man or a... What? Everybody would be just screaming a lot. You know, I wanted to say something else, but um, I'm trying to keep it clean here on this in this live. Jean, I agree. Jean and I need to step up. Yeah, Sandy, keep fighting for these beautiful man races, Martina. Yes, I will. I'm actually so fired up. Um, Frank, I have to go keep up the good fight. Thanks, Frank. Uh, you watch the replay, or we could talk another day, uh, like we did the other weekend. The weekend. Thank you so much for being here. All right. And so another cue or another comment I got with my experience to the, those boats really go fast at night with no regard to the nighttime mammals and fish. There should be speed limits and only a few boats at a time. This is very sad and can be avoided. I agree 100% with you. You know, this is just uh, out of control and the conversation has to keep going. And, you know, if it means that um, less people go out on the sites, oh, well, then so would be it, you know, but at least the manor is. Um, I really recommend when you make reservations to come here to do your research, not just go to any boat operator. Um, and then use the greenness of activity providers. At least you have, uh, you deal with operators that do their best to make it work for the animals and for the humans and for the environment. But, um, you know, if there's cows in a, in a place, 
it's even hard for the green listed operators, but at least your heart is in the right place and you put your money to the right place as well. All right, and then I got a comment from Amanda, and Amanda is actually when I came to Kona in 20 years ago and Eco Adventures was still in business, Amanda was one of the owners, so I'm still connected to her. It's great to have her um, involved. And she said, so sad, but makes me so mad. Yeah, these are two the emotions that come with this sadness and madness. And um, put a stop to this already and get this ridiculous situation under control. Yeah, Amanda, I wanted to um, give you an update on where the uh, legislation is. And what I'm showing you right now is, let's see, it's I think it's 36 pages, 35 pages of um, paperwork. And they're called, if you maybe can see that, these are called the draft rules for the Manta experience. Um, and this is a paper that goes um, from the DLNR that's drafted now. And the next step, today is actually the last day that we can make comments. Um, when I say we, the operators are all involved and we can make comments. Um, there's an email. I'm going to put this in this comment section as well. If you want to email them directly, you can make your comments too to speed up the process. Because here is how this process is going to look like. So... Draft rules are drafted. Last comment uh, day to comment from the outside is today. Then these draft rules will be sent to the board uh, for the Department of Land and Natural Resources. There are seven people that send, sit on that board. And uh, I believe every island sends one person. These guys meet every two weeks. Uh, it's, a, it's the most important board here uh, in the islands and they rule over everything that has to do with land and natural resources and the ocean. And um, that um, this draft will be presented to them. And No, excuse me, before that goes there. It goes to the Attorney General first. So the paperwork I just showed you, this goes to the Attorney General. They will wrap it up and then it goes to the land board. And then from the land board, um, they say, okay, guys, you did good work so far. Um, let's send it to... Uh, the next process, and as I believe six months later after the land board uh, says, they have to pack it up in this time and make do public hearings. So my last email stated that uh, they anticipate in the fall have public hearing. Um, and then the public can come. It's a place you can come. You have three minutes to give your testimony. And I don't know how many public hearings there will be. I was involved, not involved, I was I went to... Uh, public hearings two years ago when it was about dolphins and uh, Noah was trying to regulate the dolphin industry. Um, yeah, why only the operators, the public should be involved. If others will say, swing it to them in favor. Yeah, I agree. That at this point, it's all uh, the operators talking and that's hoping for three years. And there is this, this was a question from Jean. There is this, um, all the people that want the right thing to be done within the operators and then there are the other guys that uh, just work against it. You know, it was like, um, I saw it on TV the other day that someone said, we're going to cut this industry in half. Yeah, so be it. You know, uh, we, we cannot continue, continue in the size of, uh, of an industry. And the rules are actually saying this. The rules are written really well, I have to say. Uh, there are two or three things I'm going to mention, but the problem is the timing. So today's April um, two man is sliced up in within two weeks, a four week um, time period. Um, if we go to a public hearing, it's going to be in uh, hopefully in October. If it goes smooth until then, you know, the land board could also say, no, public hearings, we have to go back to the drawing table, go back. Anyway, go to the public hearings, there's going to be um, input. And then if everything goes smooth there, then it um, goes back to the land board and then they have to say, yes, that's what's going to happen. Implement. And then it takes time to implement too. So what are we looking at really? We're looking at at least one year and probably two years until regulations, until this circus is regulated. I would actually like to cry right now and um, I'm just getting <laughs> worked up here in front of the camera. It doesn't work that way. So I will keep the conversation going. I will keep out email addresses, or so if you want to contact me, to contact them, them, them as is the DLNR, the Department of Land and Natural Resources. Jean, I will email you, uh, um, I will put a lot of information in the description um, so you can get a hold of these guys to, to speed up uh, the process. It just doesn't work. It doesn't work. I mean, it obviously doesn't work. All right. Okay, 
So and just let me let's see. So the public only gets three minutes. Yeah, in a public hearing, you get three minutes. You can say I'm for it or I'm against what they're suggesting, and that's um, pretty much it. You know. So I still have to say the the way they wrote the um, the regulations, the draft rules, they are addressing a lot of things and in the right direction. Um, I just have one or two things that I have to do. Yeah, Tara, it's not right. And what I want to mention, I want to mention that they should do the following. What they're trying to do right now, I mean, they're going to, hall lighting is not allowed. Um, like only 26 boats, there will be 26 moorings on each dive site. Uh, 12 of them, 24 of them will be commercial, two of them will be non-commercial. So if someone goes out, Nadine, you have a small boat, you want to go to the dive site, you could go there and you would have a place to park. And then uh, through attrition from the 51 companies that want to do it right now, they're going to shrink it down over attrition. If someone doesn't do the right things, doesn't follow the rules, they will be enforcing. They want to implement all of this. So the draft rules address all of that. Also, hall lighting. <clears throat> hall lighting is when the man rays are just too close to the boats, and it's just a ridiculous uh, thing. Uh, now, people are starting to talk about uh, prop guards. Um, yeah, sure, do a prop guard. It's just not the whole concept of the man ray experience is about staying away from the boats. We don't want people, don't want man rays or people by the boats. We want one viewing area because then everybody stays together. Alrighty, so um, draft rules. So I'm going to put a lot of things into the description for you guys. So if you want to make comments, do it now. Uh, Jean, we can also, um, I'm sure you can say something tomorrow or the next day. For us, it was just a deadline for today and I'm going to email them here in a little while. And then I want to just uh, read the last um, question or comment. Um, so Sarah Zimmer said, I was surprised to see so many boats and people during my dive at Garniel Cove with the Mentas. I actually swam away from the people with my dive partner to avoid the chaos. Uh, I felt terrible afterwards. Glad to have the experience, but there has to be a safer model for the Mentas. Yes, Sarah, 100% agreed. So I wanted to give everybody a voice on this Facebook Live that had comments before. You guys have a voice too. I just... Um, it's an uphill battle. I want to keep the conversation going. I want to be the person that you can talk to and I can give you good information about this. So I, I am a critical voice and uh, I think that's what I'm supposed to do. Let's see what Jean says. Um, prop guard is just a band-aid um, to the problem. Totally agree to you. It it's, takes the discussion to the wrong direction. Um, just do prop guards if you want. If you don't want to slice up your own people when you recover them or something like this. Um, because when you get on a boat uh, and the propeller is not even running, it's off and you, you get up on the boat and maybe the water is rough and you get up and down with it. I've been pushed under the boat and weather and you can just get cut. So prop guard is good either way, but for the man's experience, it's just a bandit and it takes the conversation in the wrong direction. Thanks, Jean. Thanks for being so involved. And um, thanks to say Jason, th to your son, Jason, that he takes this uh, video, all the pictures. I used to do it. I'm just not at the dive site as much anymore. And I really appreciate his efforts um, to share his um, information and the pictures he has. Yeah, so say hi to him. Okay, so I want to wrap this up today. I'm already talking for quite some time, but um, it's an important conversation. Um, want to talk real quick about um, what you can do. Well, you can do one thing: you can speak up when you make a conversation. Thanks, Sandy. I'm going to email you then too. Um, the, I will let you know as well who to email. Um, so the greenness of activity providers, I want to just tell you real quick what that means. Um, we have the standards that were established in 2015, uh, it went out. Um, I looked at around, our group looked at everybody if they really want to do follow the standards or not. And we actually have people leaving the rooms when we, where we were creating the standards. They're saying, this is a gentleman agreement, I don't really care. Yeah, so it was, there is, from day one, the creating the standards, there was this side Yes, I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. The other ones are like, I'm not a gentleman. Um, I'm going to just leave this room and um, do what I want to do. And that's how it looks like today. Um, but my group, we felt that we had to do something. And so we created the greenness of activity providers. Um, and uh, it started on the man mentor advocates, but I felt it has a much better place in a nonprofit organization. So Hawaii Ocean Watch was founded. And that's where the greenness sits right now. And one of my um, followers as well, she said she has an Airbnb or a B&B, bed and breakfast. 
she said whenever she talks to her their customers she sends them to the green list so thank you for that so look in the description for the link it's going to be hawaiioceanwatch.org forward slash green list um, and then you can find out who um, has over the last year three years i mean they just want to do it right and if you want to spend your money go with the green listed companies um, will the other people still make money? I believe so, because I can get this information to only so many people. But the more uh, people know, the better it will be. Alrighty, so that's the Greenness of Activity Providers. Um, thank you for being here with me today. Um, thanks to Jason for the images, also for Flipper the Surf Giant. I'm going to tag you guys too. Uh, guys, thanks for being with me today. And I will keep the conversation going. And uh, I'll see you next week with more information, maybe on a happier note. I haven't decided what I'm going to do next week. But uh, give, it us a, give us a like, give us a follow. Um, I will be the critical voice in this industry. I want to continue that. And guys, thank you. Thank you, Ashaka. Back to um, Jean and everybody out here. Um, thank you for being with me. And talk to you later. Bye. <laughs>